in the shop today. Not gonna work on the goose. I think I've changed my mind on the exhaust. So I'm gonna go back to the drawing board on that thing. I think I'm just gonna do the work and get it to run out the rear. So today, got JD here. We're gonna work on the bibster. I think we might uh, narrow this thing and chop the top today. I had to I had the idea of using a laser level to basically get the exact lines that I needed to chop the top, but the level that I've got. So the thing basically just spins, like you set it up and it spins and shoots out a laser beam that's perfectly flush. So you do that, you mark it, you raise it up however many inches you want to, mark it again. The problem is, is I don't have any batteries. So batteries are one of those things that are essential when it takes batteries. So anyway, we may, we're gonna lay it down. I'm gonna work on this thing a little bit. May just go at it with uh, just old fashioned measurements. Um, I don't really wanna make more work for myself. Sometimes when you, you get your cuts wrong and it's just not perfect, when you go to put it back together, it just takes twice as long. What are your plans? Whatever you're doing, I'm gonna help on. So, I got my delivery of chromoly today. I got, basically it's five sticks of one and five eighths uh, DOM chromoly. I say it's basically five sticks because I got four full 24 foot sticks and then one four foot stick and I was thought I was gonna get five 20 foot sticks so it's basically the same thing then I got one one inch one and a half inch uh, DOM chromoly as well probably gonna get some one inch stuff too and may use some like three quarter uh, tubing on the bibster so this will get me started though Yeah, so the plan is that's four inches there, four inches here. Cut it, top will come off. Uh, go ahead and cut up on this one. And then cut down the roof on both sides. Because what'll happen is when we take the four inches out and this goes down, it's it's gonna move this forward. So you need to be able to shift that. As so there's gonna be a gap here, yeah. And then I'll just go back in here and take a donor piece and fill that back. Same thing with the door piece. I'll go back and fill that out too. We'll just start cutting and see where we get. And if we ruin it, there's other fox bodies out there. to me for now at least all right I think uh, I think we're ready to start cutting it's not an exact science but as I start to put it back together I can kind of massage it to get it to fit just like I want to um, I don't know y'all cross your fingers So as you can see, 
The B pillar itself has been cut free. It's got a straight line here. It did dent it a little bit uh, on both sides right here, but uh, I think it's not gonna be too big of a deal to fix. And like I said, the reason for this is because when you do the A pillar, this piece has to match up with this piece. And so it's gonna essentially move this thing forward you know, probably three inches. And so there's gonna be like a three inch gap here once we move this forward. And this, this line will basically slide down and we'll just reattach it. So now I'm not gonna worry about this right now. I got the back loose on both sides. Now we'll cut the A pillar loose and lift the top off. And then once the top's off, we can cut this free and chop off the bottom section of the A pillar. Once all of that is done, then we can actually shrink this thing. So we can cut the eight inches out of the firewall up front, narrow it. Basically, essentially we'll have the car in two halves. We'll narrow it, tack it back together, uh, figure out how much we gotta narrow out of the roof, and then um, cut that. And then uh, put it all back together. Put that one right now. So basically what I've done is put some uh, conduit in here, basically just tacked it up. I understand it's galvanized. I made Jared breathe it, so I wouldn't have to. Uh, anyway, I just braced it up, and what I'm, what this is gonna do, where I've welded is the exact same place on either side. So once I cut the center out, it's gonna kinda help the sides from flopping around, and I can cut four, in, uh, four inches or eight inches out of the center of this pipe. And when I pull it back together, I can just throw a piece of angle iron in there and make sure everything's straight. It'll make sure the sides are where they need to be or really close to it. And uh, I can weld it back up and it'll kind of hold things steady until I, until I get finished. I'm not really, I'm not really uh, worried about this thing moving any or flexing because I'm building an entire chassis for it. So as long as aesthetically it looks like it's supposed to look, I'm fine. As long as the door is shut and all that stuff still works, I'm good. Now we just gotta try to get the floor out. I'm sure it's gonna be a little harder than I want it to be, but uh, it's gotta go.
Well, it's uh, less and less like a car. Still seems pretty sturdy. It doesn't have much wobble in it. So basically all I've done is I just cut the whole firewall out, except for this top section. Uh, for now, I'll just reattach this top section. Uh, so I'll cut it, reattach it, and then later on I might go back and cut some of it out and actually replace a lot of this. But for now, I'll just use it as basically a brace to bring everything back together. And I left the pedal box stuff so the mass cylinder goes here. Um, the original gas pedal cable goes right here. The gas pedal itself mounts in here. That's where the steering column comes through. So I'm gonna leave this for now. What will end up happening is this thing's gonna have to actually go that way, probably like three or four inches, because when we chop it, it's gonna move this way four inches, so it's gonna have to go back like two inches to make up for the difference. That's the idea, all this will come out, basically just be cut off, but I'm gonna leave it right there for now. On the inside, the only thing I'm gonna use is these rockers. So I'll go ahead and clean all these pieces off, clean all this off. And I'll use the places where the doors mount, obviously, and latch. Well, she's filleted, right side, right side, left side, top. Used to look like that, now it looks like this. Basically what's gonna happen now is we'll stand it back up. We've got the eight inches taken out of the front and the back. We'll kind of just clamp it back together, see how everything lines up. And if it lines up pretty well, we'll tack it and then kind of see where we're at with the top. guys there you go that's basically what you're looking at we've got it just kind of clamped together right now gonna pull some measurements kind of taking a look at it make sure that this is what we want so we took eight inches out of the center of it it's pretty much like 58 inches from the outside of one door to the outside of the other door and it's like cockpit of a Cessna I mean you're gonna be holding hands with whoever you're riding with I mean it's gonna be tight but the hot rods you know, of the Model A Air are tight. They're like that. So that's that's kind of what we're going for. Basically what we're gonna do is just throw a couple tacks on it to hold it together, put the B-pillar on, a couple little tacks there, uh, narrow the roof, tack it all together, and then just kind of stand back and look at it and make sure that it is what I want. Bring the engine back out, put the tires and wheels back out there and just kind of look at it and make sure it is what I want. If it is, then we'll continue on and start making the chassis for this thing. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Got a lot of other stuff for you guys this week. Got some Eastwood stuff. Um, got a lot of stuff in store, so should have uh, several videos up this week. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more. Go do work, son. Son.